Most chord progression videos on YouTube show you how to make chord progressions or which the most popular chord progressions are, but one thing they all seem to miss is the vital skill of how to use a chord progression to arrange your track. So this is the concept of micro and macro chord progressions, which to be honest are terms I've completely just made up, but they do make sense and what's more important is how they can help you arrange your music more quickly and actually get better results than you probably do at the moment. So let's have a quick look at what I mean by those terms. So a micro chord progression is just the main chord progression around which your entire idea is built. It's usually two, three or four chords in a sequence and it could sound something like this. But the question is, how do you keep that chord progression interesting for anywhere between two and six minutes long? It's just gonna repeat and get boring. Well, that's where the macro chord progression comes into play. So the macro progression really is what I mean when I say how you use that main progression over the course of your entire track. And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking in how to do today. Now, a common mistake I see new and unskilled producers making is they think they need more chords in their progression to keep it interesting over four or five minutes, or worse still, they think they need to include a key change, which I don't recommend unless you're writing a Whitney Houston track from the 90s. And I... Most tracks just have one chord progression in one key, and yet somehow they seem to be able to make that interesting over the course of three or four minutes. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. One classic track that I absolutely love is Toto's Africa, which does switch key, and it does have several chord progressions, but 90% of the time, most of the tracks that you absolutely love are probably based on anywhere between one and four chords. Now with music, you're telling a story and taking your listener on a journey. And the chord progression could be considered the main theme of that story. Yes, of course, there are other major factors that play into the theme of the story, like the melody, but the chord progression really is the emotional underpinning of any track. Now imagine you were reading a book or watching a movie, if they changed the main theme, you'd completely lose the thread, and it would be frustrating, it would cease to make sense. And it's exactly the same with chord progressions. Better to stick to just one theme and allow that story to unfold over time. So firstly, let's look at developing a micro progression, and then we're going to implement that into a macro progression. The first thing we need to do is select a preset. I like to use a piano personally because it stops the distraction of having really cool synth presets. We can just focus on the emotions being delivered by the chords. Next thing to do is select a scale. I'm actually going to switch things up a bit. I like to use A minor because it's the simplest of scales to write in, but I'm actually going to use D Dorian today. So the way I'm going to make that easier for myself is hit scale, hit D and then select Dorian. And if you press the scale button, it's going to create a template by which you're not really gonna hit any wrong notes. I'm not gonna dwell on this too much because I've done loads of other videos on it, but let's get those bass notes in and we can build those chords up. So we're just gonna choose four bass notes. Let's listen to that. And that's gonna be the basis for our micro chord progression. So I'm just gonna skip a note each time whilst it's folded in this scale template technique. And that's gonna build out a normal triad for each chord. I'm actually gonna add, I think, some seventh chords as well. So that's just skipping an extra note, which gives it a really beautiful feel. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just add some chord inversions. So I'm gonna use these four notes, but just break them up over a couple of octaves to create something a bit more interesting and unique. And we'll do that with the second chord as well. And we're just gonna fast forward. I'll do that for the second two chords as well. So now we have this effect. Beautiful, almost too beautiful. Okay, next thing we can do is add a little variation to our micro progression if we choose to do so. So the quickest way to do that is just double it up. And if we want to make a slight change the second time it runs through, we can do. And this is just going to be changing this note, I think. You don't have to do this, but it's just gonna add variation the second time it plays through. But then this entire progression becomes our micro progression upon which the rest of our track is gonna be based. So now we need to select our chord phrases. And that sounds more complicated than it is because all it's doing is selecting two different uses of this chord progression that we're gonna use throughout the track, kind of like a palette. So the first is already the entire progression. So that's phrase one. The second one, 
is usually the first chord of the progression. It's as simple as that. So let's just repeat that. Let's repeat it eight times. So now we've got our two chord phrases. We've got this one. And then it's going to go to the full progression. And 90% of the time, they're what you're going to be using as your two chord phrases. The root chord of the scale in which you're working, which happens to coincide with the first chord of our progression in this instance. And of course, the entire micro progression as the second chord phrase of the track. Another slight variation on that is sometimes you might want to use the first two chords of your progression. So your track's going to start off this way. But as I said, usually it's going to be just the first chord of your track and then the entire progression. So now we have the theme of our track. We're going to map out the entire macro arrangement. And the way we're going to do that is use a template track in which to do it. So I'm going to create an audio channel. I'm just going to drag in a template track like so, this Camel Fat track. Let's zoom in and make sure it's synchronized to our track. And we do that by going to the first transient making sure it's warped to the correct tempo. The easiest thing to do is just Google search what tempo is this track. I know this track is 122, so I can put that in there, change it to Complex Pro, and now our track and this are warped and they're gonna be exactly in sync. Next thing I'm gonna do is just take down the volume of that reference track because I don't want clipping on the master channel. So I just take it down by 12. And now let's map out our chord progression and our macro progression to the structure of this track. Now. This is just the root chord of the track. Even though it's just the bass line, the chordal home is the root chord of this track. Even though the melody is coming in the, the vocal, the pads in the background, the chord hasn't changed. It's still the root chord of the track. It's still the root chord of the track. There's just a the melody and the strings playing over the top. It's only at this point where the chord's progression starts. So it's as simple as that. Like this is a six minute track and all the variation is coming from the other elements. So let's just map out our structure and listen to our reference track. Okay, and now we're holding on the root note of the track again. So we can just take that there. We're just going to use the root note of our progression as well, actually, the root chord. We can have a little break there if we want, but really, again, we're planning out the chordal structure of the track. And then I suspect on this drop, we're just back to the root chord of the track. Now, yes, this might be a simple song because it's melodic techno and all of the interest is really coming from the production and the automation and the melodic content. But in terms of chord structure, which is what we're talking about, this is what the track looks like, okay? So now we know as producers, if we want to create a track like this, everything that we've done here is all we need to do in terms of the chordal structure. Now, if you're going to find that a bit of a struggle to kind of get inspiration from straight away like this, if it's just a repeating chord, remember, it's not the chord. You don't have to play the entire chord. It's just using that as the home. For example, you would probably start off the track by just having the bass note as they do in their track. So it's going to be like this. with a melody playing over the top. So this is what we can do to even help this further. We can use a filter like the auto filter, and I'm just gonna automate this in as you would expect to automate things within your final production anyway. And that's gonna just help us imagine what the finished product's gonna be like. And then the chords will come in here. Got a little break here and again you know you can listen to your reference track if you do want to get help with where the different parts of the energy is going to come from but now let's listen to this whilst we play in a little random melody i'm just going to make up as i go
and then you'll get to the chord progression. So melodically and harmonically, this is simple stuff. It's just the case of not overcomplicating things. Now, of course, sometimes you might want to have a second chord progression in your track. I'm warning you now, you're probably making your life more difficult than it needs to be, but as I said, sometimes if you're writing a pop track, maybe there's a middle eight section where you want to change that chord progression. So there are a couple of ways that we can do that, and I'm just gonna look at them. So if your chorus each time is this chord progression and your verse section is the root chord held on its own. So let's just quickly mock up what that might look like. Let's get rid of this reference track. Start our track here. We've got the chorus. Sorry, we've got the verse. And then we get to the chorus, which is the full progression. Then we go back to the verse. Then we go to the chorus. That's a full progression. But then say we want to uh, have a middle eight section. So let's look at how we might do that. First, let's get rid of all that. So we've got verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And now we are going to go to the middle eight. And the way that we can do that is create the next chord progression in the same key as the entire track. So in this instance, it's D Dorian. And we can repurpose the chords that we've already used. And that could be a nice way to kind of quickly get an interesting middle eight. Again, this is just experimenting. So let's try these chords. And we'll just repeat that third one. So now this is our middle eight. Which is quite nice. And then we go back to our main progression for the chorus. Now you don't have to repurpose the chords you've already used for the chorus and your first chord phrase, but you do want to stick to chords within the key most of the time. Now usually if there is going to be a chord progression change, it will be in the middle eight section and that's usually the last break just before the final chorus. The next day. Okay, okay, so I came back the next day, so I've got my coffee. I wanted to show you another example with a tune that doesn't just start on the root chord of the track, just to show you that this really works across genres. So we're gonna use a poppier track now, but it's also tied back to some older music from the 70s. So this is Oliver Heldens with Niall Rogers, and it's a remake of that I Was Made For Loving You track. So let's have a look. I brought it in, so we've got it synced up, and we can see here I've mapped out the chordal structure of the track. And if we look at what I've done, we've actually got two chord phrases. Again, that's all you need. So let's listen to the first one. I'm going to turn the track off so that we don't get flagged for copyright, but this is the first chord progression, which is four chords. That just repeats and repeats. Let's have a quick listen to the track actually, so we can hear. It just starts with the funky guitar, ding, 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 and the vocals, and then the drop comes in. We got the funky guitar and then the bass line as well, but it's still just these exact same chords. We're just not playing the entire chord, you know, because it's just the bass notes at the moment. Then we get to where we switch out into the second one. So this is a case where there are two chord progressions, but I want to show you how it ties into what we've just talked about, about switching chord progressions. So here's the second chord progression in the track. Now listen to the, that repeats through, but then we add the variation and change the second time through, we just switch that from a minor chord to a major chord. And that's something for a different video perhaps. But again, this is just using many of the same chords that we've already used. So this chord here is this one. This chord here, I think, is the wild card. So we are using another chord from the same key though. And then we go back to this chord, which is the first chord of our normal progression. And then the second time through, as I say, we just move the third down one semitone and just change it to a major. 
So this is a good example of when we are starting with a chord progression straight away, but it just shows how simple your chordal structure of a track can be or your macro progression. So now you have the ability to sketch out your track with just one chord progression. And if you can get it sounding interesting using just one chord progression, your two chord phrases, and maybe automating a filter, you have got a very strong foundation for an excellent track when you bring in all of the other production techniques. Of course, you need those skills. So if you do want to get your music sounding professional, as quickly as possible, do check out my accelerator program below this video. We help our students get signed to some of the world's biggest labels, but more importantly, we help them write music that they love and they're actually proud of. Okay, what to do now with this information? Well, put it into practice. There's no point learning stuff if you don't put it into practice because then you won't understand it. So what I recommend doing is try this exercise with a reference track two or three times, work out what their micro chord progression is, and then map out how it works on a macro progression scale. If this video hasn't convinced convinced you of how few chords you need in an awesome song, I guarantee doing this exercise a couple of times will. Now remember, you're telling a story with your chord progression, but all good stories need a protagonist, and in this case the protagonist is the melody. The melody. Have I taken this metaphor a bit too far? I think I might have. Anyway, regardless of the genre of music that you are creating, you'll need something to work with your chord progression to tell the story. And in this video, I share with you the three steps to writing catchy melodies every time, the kind of melodies that your listeners won't be able to stop singing in their head. Let me know in the comments if you found this video useful, let me know what you want me to cover on this channel, and give it a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you over at the next video for writing amazing melodies that are going to work perfectly with the chord progression you wrote today.